Hey guys and welcome to another Outriders video. This is Ashbreaker 1.2 <laughs> video. It's an update video to the Ashbreaker build video that I had out a couple of weeks ago, which was going over my leveling build. If I link the video up there somewhere on the top, you can see it for yourself. It works really well if you're just like going through the campaign, you're grinding, you're going through your world tiers, and it helped me to get to world tier 15, no problem. I started Expeditions then, got into a challenge tier of the Expeditions 9 and 10 was, was quite challenging, but then I got stuck. I'm gonna go over the changes I made, what I'm doing, what I'm running right now. And again, this build is far from perfect it, it, a lot of mods are still all over the place that i have they're kind of the ones i want but i'm still kind of stuck trying to find that perfect gear and finally there's one thing that happened in the last hour that completely changed the game now the first change we made was based on feedback you guys gave me during the stream and that was i should be running with ash blast instead of overheat now that didn't make a lot of sense to me at first because a we had ash and bullets mod on our gun which applied every four seconds ash to enemies we're shooting at then we had the incinerate skill active which applies ash to enemies when the burn ends but once we actually did this and we made some changes in the mods we used which i'm gonna go over in a second it changed completely the damage output and it was working much more for the better we're still using feed the flames of course and uh, for self-heal and for replenishing ammunition and we're using volcanic rounds which is the centerpiece of the build that i enjoy playing now if you watched the previous video you'll remember we were using mainly weapon damage here using incinerate and then we went straight up we didn't use any of those skills up there we went straight up to here to get um the extra weapon damage from using immobilized skills the extra weapon damage on enemies afflicted with ash and then we went down here with some points to unlock fist fire and rifle to get the extra weapon damage when we proc overheat now that worked really well at the time however this is a um, skill tree that you guys pointed out to me um on a video so i watched the video and was going through it and it started making a lot more sense so what this build is focusing on is cooldown reduction and weapon leech again weapon damage weapon damage but it's not using incinerate because you're using Ash Blast, so you don't have to worry about um, how you apply Ash. Increase Weapon Leech again by 5%, and then finally Leeching Force, that every time we execute Ash Blast or Feed the Flames, it doubles our Weapon Leech for 4 seconds. So by default, if you don't have any Weapon Leech on your gun, you have a 10% Weapon Leech, and that doubles it to 20%. The next thing that we're looking at was the mods we're using. Now, if you go back to the video that I made before, you can see I was using a lot of Volcanic Mags and applying Weakness with Volcanic Rounds, etc. So you can see what I was using there. I don't really remember it off the top of my head. So one of the first changes we made is we found a new LMG, and we were able now to replace Perpetual Mobile with something more aggressive. Bone Shrapnel was a big game changer. It just exploded everything. So whenever you got mobbed in an expedition, boom, they exploded all, they heal you because they were all marked at the same time. And it's a win-win. Now, the way we are sustaining our volcanic rounds is through bullet absorptions, which is for Feed the Flames, which replenishes 33% of ammo in your magazine for every enemy affected. Now that's not a lot, but luckily there's mods which allow you to increase the number of targets that you can aim at with Feed the Flame. Now the tier three version is the best, obviously, which enables absorption of two additional targets, but you will have very early on, of course, the T1 version, which is a white grip, which enables absorption of one additional target. And that means you're already getting back 66%. Now you can, experiment around if having white grip and bullet absorption is enough for you uh, or if you need a perpetual mobile as well but try to experiment around and remove one or the other and see if it's enough because if it's enough to have less that means you can use the mod slot for something more aggressive and potentially more uh, for more damage or if you lack sustainability for something more defensive now another way that helped me a lot sustaining my ammunition was reforging bullets where critical shots on enemies afflicted with burn don't consume ammunition i definitely would recommend once you unlock it try to put it into your build use it it, you will see it's it's night and day in the way you're running out of ammunition because your volcanic rounds are burning all the enemies so you basically if you do a lot of crits or aim at the heads of the enemies and in the areas that give a lot of crits you will find you rarely run out of bullets and you feed the flame cooldown then you don't have to worry about it being very low because you have the time to let it run through get feed the flames reforging bullets it's a perfect balance it works really well for me right now now that we had freed up some mod slots, I was able to experiment around with some things. And what I found works really well right now is empowerment, which is a tier one skill you probably have unlocked very early on during your playthrough. And that actually makes sure that Ash Blast also 
causes damage. I was very lucky to have gear that rolled with it by default, which means I couldn't put another mod on it for offensive mod, a crit stack. Critical shots build up a five second stacking effect that grants you 1,965 anomaly power and 2,837 firepower. That stacks up to five times. So the anomaly power increase actually helped with the strength of Ash Blast because that made the Ash Blast stronger. But at the same time, my firepower increase obviously meant we get an extra 14,000 power, which is absolutely fantastic. So you're burning down those elites really, really quickly. And now that we're using Ash Blast and basically applying Ash to everything that we're touching, we also use Ash Cleaner because critical shots apply an extra 12,000 damage to enemies afflicted with Ash. So that is brilliant. So whenever you have a big group of guys, just Ash Blast, boom, extra damage, your crits are already increasing your firepower, and boom, you, you gotta mow through them. Now, of course, there's a limit at a certain uh, challenge tier, you're gonna start feeling that you're actually underpowered, but that's more to do with your gear and the weapons you're using. And another mod that I was able to find then at some point, and it actually was one of the last ones that I unlocked, in tier two was emergency stance emergency stance is um applies a golem effect on you i don't know exactly how strong it is i don't know the details of golem but basically what happens is as soon as your health drops below 30 percent you see this artificial armor kind of creeping over your body it's like you're getting encased in something like a hard shell and that stays on you for four seconds and you're nearly unkillable for that time and that gives you plenty of time to wait for your cooldown or feed the flames heal yourself get your weapon leech in getting yourself healed up and getting out of the way and basically running off hiding somewhere quickly getting your cooldowns in place so it's a really good lifesaver and 10 second cooldown it's not all that long if you can manage to avoid trouble for a couple of seconds after that now vampiric mark is something that is a leftover i'm not actually using that just in case you're wondering uh, that's the only reason i'm mentioning it because you probably saw it and going like why is he using that um there is a mod you can use that actually applies bleed on crit and then Vampiric Mag is very good because killing killing those enemies that are bleeding gives you ammunition back. But I no longer need it now with the setup I have. So once I have un had unlocked Reforging Bullets, I didn't need that setup anymore, which again gave me more room to put a mod on like Flame Crasper. Another mod we're using now, and I would definitely recommend for you to consider using in your build, is Bloodloss. Now, we were lucky and we rolled, actually, we found an item that had it already on it and it gave me some room to put Bullet Absorption on. But Bloodlust increases your firepower on a killing shot by 6430 and it stacks up to three times now put that into combination with bone shrapnel you immediately have your basically max stack on that and then combine that with the extra power of your crits from crit stack and you have a huge increase in power and the last mod that is worth mentioning is bullet kindling so bullet kindling and does 20% more damage on enemies afflicted by burn, which is a no-brainer. You continuously have everything on fire, so you're always doing 20% more damage. But after all that, I still wasn't able to beat CT10 CT and uh, CT11, sorry. And I wasn't playing too bad. I mean, if you look back at the stream we had a couple of days ago, um, it wasn't necessarily my playstyle. I just didn't have enough oomph, enough firepower. So I was playing a little bit too defensive. So, but I couldn't change anything out because any defenses mod, defensive mod I would have taken out and replaced with the offensive would have left me too defenseless. Until I got enough pods and i would definitely recommend you do that do enough missions to collect enough pod resources to be able to buy this gun the wicker that was an absolute game changer to me once i bought that gun with ultimate ashen bullets which it comes with ultimate ashen bullets that that was it i just absolutely shredded through everything now mind you it's a submachine gun so you're gonna have to be comfortable with getting in close which in expeditions is not that much of a big deal so you might want to pick the expeditions that are not uh, full of snipers but you buy this gun from tiago now he won't show the gun again because i'm owning it right now um, the cost of it goes up by the way at the higher level so at level 48 you can see it costs 9200 that's just another random gun but they're all about the same price 19200 i bought it at uh, level 46 which is ct10 which cost at that point uh, 3600 and i would definitely recommend when you start grind for the pods and get that gun even if you use it just to scrap it for the mod which i'm gonna do as soon as i have a replacement lmg so that's it that's the update on the build i'm using and how it evolved into what it currently is 
I'm hoping that it helped you a little bit in maybe experimenting with your own build. If you're stuck, you know, maybe you saw some mods that you didn't think about using before or changing around from sustainability mods to weapon leech and try that out. Anyway, let me know in the comments below what worked well for you and what build is actually helping you a lot and what mods you can't just live without that you find absolutely amazing. I'm looking forward to reading them, but I'm gonna leave this video here. I'm gonna leave you with some gameplay. I hope you guys had a good time with the video. If you did, remember to kick that like button in the balls and I hope to see you guys in the next video. And if you're new to the channel and you like what you see, hit that subscribe button. See you guys next time. Until then, as always, huge pass and happy gaming.